Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dave Walters. I'm a yacht broker here in Fall Lauderdale, and we're on board a Hylus 63 built in 2014 called Redbird. It's one of the more amazing boats uh, I've ever been on in the last uh, 10 years in the 60 foot class. Um, it was highly customized uh, by a West Coast owner, uh, designed by uh, one of the world's finest, Hermann Frères, and built by a, a very experienced company uh, called Queen Long exclusively for Hylus. Uh, there are many custom features and upgrades that make this a, a boat that is quite unique and uh, uh, it will be very hard to find anything as special in the market right now. It's a great uh, profile view of uh, the graceful lines of Redbird uh, from across the canal. You can see the uh, carbon fiber mast with uh, swept back spreaders, uh, the plumb bow uh, which allows for a longer water line, uh, the graceful shear line, and the long foredeck uh, leading back to the broad stern. We're going to take another look at uh, Redbird from the uh, starboard quarter. Uh, note the uh, swim platform. Uh, again, the uh, graceful shear line. We're now looking at the port side of Redbird. Uh, moving forward, you can see the port step between the winches to access the cockpit. The stylish wraparound windows. The long, low slung foredeck uh, leading to the uh, bow with uh, stem head and double anchor platform. Uh, we also have a carbon fiber pole for the asymmetrical spinnaker and full covers for everything. One of the valued features of Redbird is the transom with step down to the swim platform, hydraulic uh, lift to access the uh, garage which also has uh, aft deck uh, lazarette hatches. Uh, we have the carbon fiber electric uh, custom davits and uh, a dinghy that was uh, painted blue. It's a hard bottom inflatable with a 40 Yamaha as a custom uh, teak uh, floor uh, as well as uh, a stereo and uh, radio. We're going to walk into uh, Redbird's double cockpit, but before that, uh, uh, notice the twin wheels. They're both custom carbon. Uh, one of the uh, the advantage of this boat is, is it can be handled by two people. Uh, you can control the sail operation. You can deploy the sails right here, uh, Genoa staysail, and then we have a, a stowaway main. Uh, we have bow and stern thrusters for docking. All of Redbird's uh, teak decks, including the uh, cockpit floors, seats, side decks, fore deck, aft deck, uh, feature a custom gray caulking. Okay, forward of the twin wheel station, we have a step down into the lounging, dining, entertaining cockpit um, with a beautiful teak table with double leaves and a, uh, a, the top uh, opens to uh, give you a refrigerator. Forward of the main mast and uh, raised salon is the long expanse of foredeck. Uh, there's uh, $6,000 worth of uh, cushions that uh, set on this with uh, drink holders and backrests. A closer look at the foredeck, uh, first uh, thing we're looking at is the Furlex staysail furler and the large lazarette hatch to access the fore peak. Uh, we have a Maxwell uh, anchor windlass, a double anchor platform, a large uh, stainless anchor, and we have the headsail furler, again hydraulically operated from the helm station. Uh, we're looking aft at the uh, very attractive window styling and uh, flush hatches on the top of the cabin house. Uh, notice the uh, wide side decks uh, and the uh, uh, forward end of the companionway dodger and bimini and well, connector. We're going to have Peter Grimm, one of the uh, world's leading sail makers who built the sails for Redbird, uh, talk about the carbon fiber mast, the in-boom furling, and the general... Hi, my name's uh, Peter Grimm. I've been in the marine business for over 30 years. I've uh, had the pleasure to be a sailmaker for most of that time. So the boat's a cutter rig, which I really like because we've got 130% um, roller furling Genoa and we have a full size uh, working force staysail and with the swept back spreaders and the way the Genoa tracks are set up, you can really optimize the size of the force staysail and really take advantage of the cutter rig. And one of the great things about uh, these boats is they're easily driven. So when the breeze gets up to where you want to just go ahead and roll up the Genoa and you can put it away, you can sail with the staysail in the main and still make a nice uh, boat speed, boat's comfortable, 
and uh, sailing really, really when well. When you put that together with the fact that it's carbon boom, carbon mass, spinnaker pole, everything's very light. It doesn't need a lot of sail area to, to drive it, and yet it's a, it's a powerful boat. Um, in my opinion, again, this boat for 60 something feet, you won't find anything like this. This boat's amazing. When we go below, Amanda Noon, who is my uh, brokerage uh, manager, uh, is going to give you a tour of the uh, interior at Woodwork. And then we're going to have Dave Lalonde on board, uh, who installed and uh, put together the electronic and uh, sound system package uh, with the owner. We're now in Redbird's raised main salon which has custom white oak horizontal woodwork, which is carried on throughout the course of the boat. Above that, we have our Cameo ultra leather headliner, and the soft goods and decor were customized by Merrill Stewart. On the port side, we have an adjustable height dining table with double leaves that can be closed and lowered to make into a coffee table, a large L-shaped settee, with mounted television above. Everything on Redbird is customized, including the stainless steel grab rails and built-in Avanti wine cooler. We're in Redbird's Gourmet Galley. We have custom Avonite countertops throughout with backsplash and fiddles, plenty of storage with drawer banks on both sides, and two double overhead shelf lockers and a single one towards the end. We have a dishwasher drawer above a GE convection microwave and below that a five burner gas stove and grill. Moving forward we have four of our six sub-zero refrigerator and freezer drawers. The top freezer drawer containing the ice maker. Over here we have the trash compactor and above the double stainless sink with custom fixtures and separate water purifying system. Above that is the built-in Mealy coffee maker. And moving back you could see the other two sub-zero refrigerator drawers. And we're now moving aft to the owner's master suite with large centerline berth and below the berth we have four drawers for storage. And on the starboard side, we have a settee with hull port above and drawers beside the bed. And we're now on the port side of the master suite, which has two large hanging lockers with two additional lockers below, a built-in vanity with a mirror. Looking forward of the berth, we have a built-in flat screen television with double locker below. We're now entering the in-suite head with separate stall shower and full length mirrored entry door. The countertops are avenite with backsplash and above that we have mirrored cabinets and further above an opening port. Forward of the main salon are two guest cabins and two heads. To the port side is the first guest cabin with double berth. Across the passageway is the first head, which is used for the port cabin and as a day head. Moving forward to the full beam VIP guest cabin, which has a center line queen berth with drawers below. To port side is a hanging locker with drawers and above the berth are shelf lockers. All cabins feature their own climate controls for heat and AC, a mounted flat screen television, and sound system. On the starboard side is the in-suite VIP head, which has a separate stall shower, varnished teak grate floors, avenite countertops, and mirrored vanities. Aft of the nav station and adjacent to the companionway, is the third guest cabin or crew cabin with a double wide berth which has a drawer bank of three drawers at the end and a separate washer dryer below. The third cabin has access to two heads, one forward and one aft through the mirrored door. 
we're now uh, looking at the starboard side of the engine room through uh, two double doors. Uh, we have the 5kW uh, backup generator and then we're going to move through the second set of double doors to the 13kW primary generator. We also have a thousand gallon a day water. On the starboard side adjacent from the companionway is the nav center which has an AC and DC electrical panel and additional panels with breakers and switches. Above the nav desk are flush mounted electronics. Hi, I'm Dave Lalonde uh, from Lamplighter Marine. I uh, wanted to go over a few features of sailing vessel Redbird. So uh, uh, strap on, we'll just go through some of the systems and uh, we'll um, try to show you some of the unique capabilities that exist on this boat that you don't have on a typical uh, yacht. We have the Raymarine GS displays also on this boat. Uh, this display uh, is a hybrid touch, meaning that it is a touch screen. You can use the keypad and every display on this boat has an associated keypad and it's paired to the display. Um, this particular display, it's called the GS. Uh, it's a Raymarine Premier Dealer offering only. The neat thing about this is it is a multi-touch pinch to zoom and you notice as soon as I stop zooming the screen refreshes right away. This is called the home screen. I call these apps. Uh, this is the chart app where we just were, the weather app, you've got the radar app, the IR camera app is something that's not very common on the boats, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Dual chart, chart radar, all of these pages can be fully customized. There is a Fusion Link app here that would control the Fusion stereo on the boat. Uh, the Fusion stereo is only for the cockpit use. Uh, down below we've got a Bose system with surround sound uh, with custom speakers as so well. The HDMI output from the GS series display in the nav center is currently routed to the screen on the main salon television. So what we have now is we've got the chart plotter pulled up, we've got the data bar which shows your navigational information, a little bit of wind information is up there as well. So since this image is being remoted out of the GS series display, I have full control using the Ray Control app and I can control the range of the display. I can actually hit the home button to show the home page and if you look on the TV it's just a mirror image. So I can go to the radar page. So you have full control of the camera. I'll, by the swipe of the finger on the iPad you can put the camera wherever you want to point it. Okay, we're in the companionway of Redboard now, and uh, there's five displays in the companionway opening. Uh, you have a little A7 display here. This is a quite a little capable unit as well. Hit the home button, and you can pull up a uh, chart plotter, radar, the IR camera. Everything can be displayed on, on here. You have four I-70 multifunction displays. This is to display boat data. Um, typically, depth, speed, and wind is what you see above a companionway. Uh, we've got a lot more information that could be displayed on these units. Okay, now we're in the port pedestal uh, steering station. Uh, this is the primary steering station for the boat, but everything that's on the port side is mirrored on the starboard side. Here's the GS displays for the pedestal. They're on a black background. The owner wanted to do black up here. I think it looks very, very sharp. Um, this is a larger display than what's down in the nav center, um, but it operates just the same as the nav center unit does. We have dual autopilot control heads, one per pedestal, okay? We do have the rotary knob so we can adjust the steering uh, with this rotary knob. This is the Raymarine Evolution Series autopilot. Uh, this autopilot is probably the best operating autopilot that you can possibly put on a boat. Now we're looking at the mass on Redbird. On the port side, we've got the V3 IP track phone. That VPI3 is a great phone uh, to have on board. It gives you broadband internet connection to SC anywhere in the world. On the starboard S1 spreader, we have the TrackVision HD7 SAT TV system. Well, you've seen some of the capabilities of this unit, of this boat. We do a Bible for our clients, and this has instructions as well as data drawings. I hope you enjoyed your uh, first look at Redbird. Uh, I want to thank Amanda, Peter Grimm, Dave Lalonde for their insight into uh, some of the features uh, which the owner spent over a million dollars on the customizing. Uh, this is uh, a yacht that is truly special and uh, I hope you will uh, contact uh, Dave Walters Yachts uh, to arrange an inspection or to learn more about it.